Hi, my name is Kaylee Messer. It's my ID. Okay. And I have a little notebook with notes so that I'll remember everything I need to talk about for this presentation. Okay. So for my research project, I decided to discuss medication errors in my facility. Um, I didn't name the facility so that it would be protected with its privacy. I just referred to it as my facility within my paper. But mainly, most of the results that I'm able to find in my project is based off of the MedSurge floor since that's what I work on. However, I do flirt to um, the progressive care unit and the um, emergency room and different areas in the hospital like that. So I was able to study up different areas within the hospital for my medication errors. Um, the main reason I wanted to do this is because lately we've seen a lot more medication errors and whenever we make a medication error, we do have to write an incident report and write what happened and how the patient reacted and different things. And there's a few things that I think we could do to reduce this problem. The first thing that I've seen that has definitely helped us is our smart pumps. So we got new um, smart pumps lately that some people are not a fan of, mostly the nurses who have more experience since they're used to the older pumps. But these pumps already have pre-programmed drugs in them with the um, concentration of the drug as well as the rate of the medication it's going. So a lot of times we can look at the pump and when we're clicking through and setting our rates and everything, we can easily see um, if what we're about to enter looks off the wall compared to something that's already pre-programmed into the pump. And more times than not, what's already pre-programmed is what the physician ordered. Um, additionally, we do computerized order entry, and we have a new way to do that now. So we're learning a new policy um, that's supposed to make this easier. Now, usually this is easier and prevents errors whenever physicians do it, since a lot of the times whenever we call physicians, especially during the night shift, they are either asleep and they forget little things such as to order it as needed or order it one time or to order it twice a day or something like that or put a cap on it. Um, especially with things like when we get catapress ordered for blood pressure. They forget to say for a systolic pressure greater than 170 or something like that. Um, so we see a lot of medication errors with that. And we also see a lot of them that have to do with giving a medication twice. A lot of nurses will look in the MAR and the last nurse that gave it that was ordered it by the doctor, she'll tell us about it in her report and she'll forget to say whether or not she definitely gave it or not. She'll just say it's ordered and you know, nurses are supposed to just understand that it's in the MAR if it was given. Well, since people forget to scan it in, it's not always in the MAR. And then the nurse on the next shift, instead of finding out whether that medication was given or not, especially because we have a lot of confused patients, so um, their information might not always be reliable whether or not they said they took a medicine. Um, so we might double medicate a patient and that leads to a lot of adverse events too. Um, so the computerized order entry and the smart pumps, I both think that even though they're already in our system, if we would be a lot stricter in those compliances, I could use those within my research project as interventions to see how they affect um, medication errors. So the last thing that I have that we haven't implemented, and we've actually done backwards since I started six months ago, is nurse to patient ratios. So on my floor, on my med surge floor, usually day shift and evening shift get no more than five patients per nurse, which is pretty good and it usually works out unless there's just this super hectic, crazy off, off the wall day. But for night shift, it is very rare that we get any less than seven or eight patients and sometimes we even have up to nine, and I believe nine is actually our maximum. Well, a lot of times this makes it harder and there's a stigma, you know, that patients are asleep at night, and a lot of times that is not true, especially with confused patients. So there are a lot more medication errors on night shift compared to other shifts since nurses are skipping all those brief little steps in patient safety just to get all their charting done on time, get all this stuff passed. Um, you see a lot of nurses that will punch in the little no the barcodes into the computer so you can manually scan it instead of actually scanning it with the scanner and the computer doesn't know the difference in whether or not you did that at the nurse's station or within a patient's room. So a lot of nurses will do that and then they'll walk into the wrong room and give the wrong pill to the wrong patient. And 
sometimes we have nurses who won't admit it you know they don't want to get in trouble stuff like that so there probably are reports that go unreported and um, errors we don't know about but our nurse to patient ratio overall I believe if it was decreased if maybe the night shift only had up to six patients maximum then we would see a lot better results in our medication errors we wouldn't see nearly as many and that's kind of what my project focuses around so I wanted to do something that interested everybody that is a big problem that I noticed in our facility um, it's a big problem in patient safety our physicians are constantly hammering us about it and the supervisors have lately made notes and made remarks to us about it in report and when they're coming to do their rounds during our shifts about how many errors and I just think that if we use those three interventions those are easily measurable you know we can um, observe ourselves I can go in and look and see whether or not my coworkers are actually doing this and as well as myself I can test myself on this too because um, I'm not the perfect nurse and I have manually entered things on a pump whenever it was already pre-programmed and that's not the safest thing to do um, but whenever we implement these interventions I believe they're easily measured and we can look at how many incident reports were turned in before we strictly enforce these compared to after we enforce them so um, the project was mainly just in the interest of our patients and our healthcare team because you know just as much as we want to keep our patients safe and that's our ultimate goal is of course to avoid any adverse reactions especially death um, we also want to protect ourselves we worked hard for our license and we do not want to lose it and do anything to risk it um, thank you